Today, we're going to discuss the mysterious race known as the Collectors. You know, part of us is hoping to discover that Bioware named them as such just so they can make a joke out of the Collectors edition, because we here at Matterwet Follower would have done the exact same thing given the opportunity. Will we be making that discovery in today's video? No, no we won't. So on that slightly disappointing note, let's dive in and address the enigma of the Collectors. Resembling humanoid insects, these wrinkly bipedal aliens sport little in the way of individuality. Their tough exoskeletons, multiple eyes and weak but effective wings create a chilling effect on one's nerves that is only compounded by the creature's hive mentality. There is never just one collector, if you see one, start running, because that's only the edge of the incoming swarm. What makes it even worse is that collectors are mindless drones, blindly following orders and unconcerned with self-preservation. Few enemies are so terrifying as one who does not fear death. This shared consciousness is facilitated by only collectors who bear physical distinctions from the rest, known as collector generals. Unlike your regular collector foot soldiers, these large multi-legged monstrosities have no humanoid characteristics and instead have gone full on bugs life. Generals are the leaders, as one would expect. Each has the ability to take manual control over any regular collector unit, allowing for a more effective method of executing tactics on the battlefield. One could argue this idea is reminiscent of gameplay in an average real-time strategy game and one just did. Perhaps the most shocking attribute about the collectors, at least to those who haven't played the games yet, in which case stop watching right now and go play them, is their origins. Rather than being their own naturally evolved race, collectors are actually the results of extensive genetic manipulation on none other than the Protheans themselves. Many assume that the Reapers completely annihilated the Protheans during the previous cycle, however, while that is largely true, a good percentage of the population was kept alive as subjects for massive experimentation which resulted over time in the race we know now as the Collectors. Now completely under the influence of the Reapers, they are a little more than drones to carry out the will of their masters. After the extermination of the Protheans, the Reapers return to dark space while their Collector subjects moved beyond the Omega-4 relay where none could follow but where they remained in contact with their overlords. Around 1600 CE, at the behest of the Reapers, they began showing themselves again, living up to their name by collecting various individuals from the races of the galaxy. Due to the unsavoury nature of a large percentage of the galaxy, many groups were perfectly willing to make these sorts of deals with them in exchange for advanced technology or simple monetary gain. They still largely kept to themselves, however, and many assume they were simply a myth. The first major incident of the current cycle occurred when collectors attempted to purchase several human slaves from the Blue Sun's mercenary group on the station of Omega. The attempt was foiled, however, when Arya Taluk interrupted the meeting, resulting in the deaths of everyone involved in that transaction. During the incident, Arya learned from the Blue Suns that the Collectors appeared to have a special interest in humanity. The point was further hammered home a week later, when the SSV Normandy was attacked and destroyed by a Collector ship, resulting in the death as we know of Commander Shepard, but we also know that he eventually gets better. However, Shepard's resurrection almost didn't happen, as soon after the attack, Collectors attempted to acquire the Commander's body. Shepard's ally Liara Tassoni thwarted the attempt with the help of Shadow Broker agent Ferran, and the body was delivered instead to Cerberus. The Collectors didn't know it at the time, but this was the beginning of their downfall. Two years later, Commander Shepard was brought back from the dead thanks to Cerberus's Lazarus project. Now back in action and the Cerberus resources at their disposal, Shepard gathered a team and led what was essentially a suicide mission against the Collectors who had now resorted to abducting entire human colonies. 
Shepard stopped the collectors by neutralizing their base, saving the remaining colonies, and with the fortunate side effect of ruining the Reaper's plans. During Shepard's campaign against the Collectors, another attack on the human colony of Fell Prime was witnessed by Lieutenant James Vega. Vega was able to obtain the valuable information from the Collectors that could prevent future abductions. However, this information was gained at the cost of the entire human colony and the Collectorship itself. And by the time the intel was delivered to the Alliance, Shepard had already taken out the main Collector base. This isn't to say Vega's actions were for nothing, as the Collectors returned during the Reaper invasion in 2186. It is possible that the intel he gathered may have played a part in ensuring the Collectors weren't as big of a threat as they could have been. Indeed, when the Leviathans were forced to show themselves after spending eons in hiding, they severed the Reaper connections to many Collectors, resulting in a few regaining their sentience and electing to fight alongside the races of the Milky Way. So let's have a brief look at the military of the Collectors. As effective as they are as a unified force, Collectors actually rarely engage in open warfare. On the ground, Collector assaults generally consist of an initial assault by Seeker Swarms. These gigantic groups of machines resemble large bugs, easily infiltrate almost any battlefield, stinging any organic they find, which completely paralyzes them while keeping them alive. Once the swarms have done their thing, ground forces come in to take the paralyzed organics or simply wipe them out. That isn't to say they won't fight. Thanks to the tactical advantage of Collector Generals and their ability to assume direct control of any drone under their command, they are a formidable force when they need to be. However, when faced with opposition capable of destroying them, Collectors will prefer to flee more often than not. Space battles bear a slight similarity in that Collectors prefer to use machines to do their dirty work. Oculus drones resembling large, menacing mechanical eyes perform the majority of the ship-to-ship -ship combat. Meanwhile, the large collector cruisers show themselves only when needed. With their powerful particle beam weapons capable of ripping right through kinetic barriers, generally your best bet is to hope they're never needed when you're around. Collectors are intimidating, terrifying and just so darn interesting. So hopefully you had as much fun hearing about them as we did talking about them. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and thanks for checking out this video. If you're into all things Mass Effect and want to see more videos like this one, hit that subscribe button and we'll be seeing you next time right here on Mass Effect Follower.